Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. Uh, what am I going to do now? Time for some capacitor checking. So we're going to focus in on this guy here. And we're going to go through about four, five, six capacitors I've removed from the radio and check them out and just see how bad they are uh, based on this tester. I also have this one, which will measure its capacitance. And I have this other way cool one here. I'm going to compare them all. Let's Let's find out what's really going on here. So we're going to start with the uh, Hunts molded capacitor. Uh, this guy, preliminary testing in the radio, suggested he was leaky. I'd be stunned if it isn't. Okay, starting on the 25 volt setting. This control doesn't mean anything. All that matters is this. 25 volts across this capacitor. What will the eye do? a hard time getting that eye on camera. Yeah, that's a little better. Let's get a bit of a shade on it there. It would be better. Okay, here we go. Okay, see how it opened? The eye opened? That indicates good. But see how slow it was? That was pretty slow for 25 volts. And see, it didn't open up all the way either. Okay, so 150 volts. So the capacitor is showing very significant leakage, leakage at just 150 volts. I'm going to give it a moment to discharge here. Oh, the thing is discharging internally too. So let's try them here. This is a pretty smart tester. It reads something called the ESR equivalent series resistor. A parameter that I'm really not that familiar with, frankly, and not even all that comfortable with. And I, I think it's come out of the testing of low voltage capacitors and trying to get uh, you know, a grip on the same thing the high voltage testing does with a leakage test. There we go. So according to this, this is a 67 nanofarad capacitor, that's, that's a 0.06, I believe, 0.06 microfarads, 3.1% V-loss. I'm not familiar with these parameters, so I think that sounds a little high. A lot more comfortable with the leakage test, frankly. Okay. Now, let's go on to another capacitor. I might not bother with this guy here. I won't test the capacitance with this meter because once the capacitor is leaky, I know the capacitance test becomes false. Take this guy here. This is the one I thought was the AVC capacitor. It's so waxy, I hope I make a connection there. If this pops really quick, we'll know it's, it's not actually connected. Here we go. Just like the other one. So it happens at 150. 150. You can't open at 150. I guarantee you, you can put a brand new capacitor in here, you can crank this thing right up to 450, and that eye will pop open right away. So this is clearly leaky. Any surprises? No surprises. Now, the next two here. These are the two I replaced. Um, this one is the actual capacitor whose job it was to block DC from the grid of the output tube. Let's see how good he is. Can he block it? Just 25 volts. That's all we're asking of you. Just block. Here we go. Hey, it's not so bad, is it? 150. Well, it's not as bad as I was expecting. 250. So, this is not a quantitative measurement by any means, uh, but this shows evidence of some leakage, uh, but not as bad as the other ones. So that little bit of leakage with 300 or so volts pushing it from the B plus, pushing it through, or 250, whatever the B plus is, pushes through enough charge through this guy 
to collect on that grid uh, because the grid has that big one meg resistor. If you drop that one meg resistor to say 1000, you might bleed the charge right off. Of course, it affect everything else. It's, a, it's not a. I'm babbling here. Stop babbling. Okay, I think those are in. Well, this is the guy who was blocking DC from getting back into the volume control. testing a lot better. That's 250 volts. It's much better. Surprised. You know, we might come up with a reason for why why these two guys are a little better. A little better than this guy. You know, disruption of the wax. Uh, who knows? They're all bad. They're all bad enough to be changed, that's for sure. So this is kind of like a, taking out a sample of capacitors from the radio, and now I'm checking to see what condition the sample is in so I can judge whether it makes sense to replace the rest. And of course it makes sense to replace the rest. Uh, I didn't have to do this test to prove that, but always interesting. Is that all the capacitors I've done so far? One, two, three, four. Four guys. That's it. That's the story on the capacitor so far. Thanks. See ya. Okay, I got two capacitors to check here. One of these two, or maybe both of them, appear to have been responsible for all the uh, crashing sounds in the radio, as if they were breaking down. So they quite possibly were. Not sure how we can see that on here, but maybe we can. Not sure. Okay, first capacitor, 0 0.05. 25 volts. There. there. 25 volts, here we go. Not so good. I'm sure it won't open at 150. Now, the question is, could we possibly figure out this is the noise maker. Let me just turn on an AM radio here in the shop. Policy solutions that uh... Okay. Let's try that. Let's see if you can hear any of the clicking from here. Say I heard a thing. Okay, on to the next one. So uh, this big guy, just because it's a larger capacitor, if it's that much more likely to, you know, there's more to it, right? There's more, there's more electron roadway in there to develop potholes. Let's see. Okay, 25 volts. What are you going to show us? Oh, 25 volts and it's it's leaking. I don't think we could hear 25 volts sparking. Let's see. 150? 250? Bit of a long shot. Perhaps if I did a little more experimenting, I could probably... Hey! Look what's right next door here. Huh. Okay. Let's see what we can do with this. Maybe this guy can hear the arcing or the breaking down in the capacitor.
expected. Uh, uh, that's what we're hearing. Make sure I got this right on AF. Let's put it on RF. And A and B. I'll try here. I think this is probably crazy when I do it, but hey, <laughs> crazy's good too, you know. Crazy's good. Actually, I should turn off the, turn off the radio. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Turn this guy here. What are the chances? So what I'm hoping for, in case you haven't figured it out, is that the breakdown inside here, the little little tiny lightning bolts, would make a, a static sound similar to what we heard in the radio. We would just hear it here. Quickly <laughs> jumped off. That was an exciting moment. Try it again. No, no. Interesting. You know what I could have done? Now, some of you are saying, oh, Jim, you blew it. I could have taken this and poked around the radio on these capacitors and see if I can pick up the noise. That would have been a lot smarter. Okay, next time, next time I'll be smarter. In any case, both these resist, uh, capacitors were leaking. All the ones I've tested out of this radio have been leaking. Leaky, leaky, leaky. Not too surprising. Remember how dirty this thing was? It's been stored in some high humidity location forever opposed to being in a nice air-conditioned house its whole life. So, more capacitors to go.